In the same speech that John F. Kennedy promised a man on the moon, he also outlined a proposal to form what would eventually become the United States Navy SEALs program. The allocated funds, over $100 million, went into developing the Navy Sea, Air, and Land Team, or Navy SEALs. The force traces its beginning back to the closing years of World War II, when the U.S. Navy Scouts and Raiders School was founded. The teams were utilized in secret anti-communist operations in Cuba, and by 1962, the Navy SEALs were at work in Vietnam. The men with green faces, as the Viet Cong called them, because of their camouflage face paint, became a force to be reckoned with, extremely effective in anti-guerrilla and guerrilla operations, and taking from the Viet Cong what was previously safe territory for the enemy. The Navy SEALs still operate today under extreme secrecy and on more dangerous missions than ever. On May 2nd, 2011, SEAL Team 6 successfully completed its mission to kill Osama bin Laden, the terrorist leader and head of Al-Qaeda responsible for planning the attacks on the United States of September 11th, 2001, after a decade-long manhunt as part of the War on Terror. Since the Vietnam War and the fall of the USSR, the United States Navy has continued to develop newer, faster, and more efficient warships and weapons. The U.S. Navy, in response to the lessened threat of nuclear strike, began to position its fleets in order to better serve special operations and strike missions in regional conflict, rather than preparing them for full-scale nuclear war with the Soviets. Today, the Navy is an integral part of the War on Terror, participating in actions during operations Iraqi Freedom and Enduring Freedom, and in Operation Odyssey Dawn in 2011, launching cruise missiles into military targets in Libya in order to enforce UN resolutions and rid the country of its oppressive regime. Our action in the Gulf is about fighting aggression and preserving the sovereignty of nations. It is about keeping our word, our solemn word of honor, and standing by old friends. It is about our own national security interests and ensuring the peace and stability of the entire world. Just after 10 a.m. on the morning of May 17, 1987, an Iraqi Mirage F-1 fighter jet descended on the USS Stock, sailing off the coast of Saudi Arabia near the exclusion boundary of the Iran-Iraq War. The jet fired two 1,500-pound Exocet missiles upon the frigate, killing 29 in the explosion and resulting fire, and eight more after the incident from Burns. It remains unclear as to whether the pilot of the Mirage was acting under orders, or if it truly was, as Saddam Hussein later called it, an unintentional accident. However, the attack remains the only successful anti-ship missile strike on any American warship. Operation Desert Storm in 1991 saw hundreds of Tomahawk II cruise missiles launched from naval warships in the Persian Gulf and the battleships USS Missouri and USS Wisconsin firing their 16-inch guns for the first time since the Korean War. Targets in Kuwait were struck, meant to drive out invading Iraqi forces, and the unending barrage from U.S. Navy weapons defeated and sent back the Iraqi army after only 100 hours. Prior to these bombings, Operation Desert Shield saw more than 240 ships carrying 18.3 billion pounds of supplies and equipment into Saudi Arabia to sustain the U.S. and Allied troops in the impending campaigns. The United States Navy's superiority on the seas also helped enforce United Nations trade sanctions against Iraq, crippling leader Saddam Hussein's economic lifeline. When a crisis confronts the nation, the first question often asked by policymakers is, what naval forces are available and how fast can they be on station? 
The terrorist organization Al-Qaeda has long professed to be an enemy of the United States. Before the attacks of September 11th, 2001, there were the U.S. Embassy bombings of 1998 and the suicide attack on the USS Cole in 2000. The U.S. Navy guided missile destroyer was docked in Aden Harbor, Yemen, when a small boat sidled up to the destroyer's port side and exploded. The concussion created a 40 by 40 foot hole in the side of the ship, killing 17 and injuring another 39. Rules of engagement kept the crew from firing upon the small boat, which approached without answering radio calls or requesting permission. In fact, Petty Officer John Washak was ready to fire upon another suspicious craft nearby when he was told by a senior chief petty officer, no shooting unless we're shot at. In the wake of the USS Cole attack and the ongoing war on terror, the US Navy has begun to reevaluate the rules of engagement. 11 carriers, 22 cruisers, 61 destroyers, 26 frigates, two combat ships, 53 submarines, 122 surface warships. There are currently 10 fleets or commands controlled by the United States Navy today, with a wide range of specializations and strategic positions across the globe. The Naval Reserve Force is represented in each of the United States and Puerto Rico and Guam by at least one Navy operational support center where the selective reservist sailors perform their monthly drills. The United States Navy today maintains facilities in North America, Europe, Asia, the Mediterranean, and the Pacific Rim. The largest base overseas is located in Yokosuka, Japan. In 2007, the United States reached its smallest fleet size since World War I with 274 active ships. The small number, however, is more than made up for in the amount of firepower and the sheer size of some vessels compared to earlier ships. The technological advances propelled by the Navy have ensured that our sailors are an unparalleled nautical force. The men and women who serve in the United States Navy help in preserving peace every single day in many corners of the globe. Unofficial mottos for the Navy include honor, courage, commitment, and not for self, but for country. They are our first line of defense on either of our coasts and first responders to remote regional crises. The battle fleet tonnage of our Navy's ships is larger than the next 13 largest navies combined. While in the past, the Navy's fate seemed uncertain, there should remain no question that the United States Navy is an entirely integral, and some might say, the most important part of the United States Armed Forces. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to help us produce more compelling historical content like this, please like, comment below, and share this video with fellow history buffs. And of course, be sure to subscribe to help keep history happening.